One of the most beautiful definitions of humankind was made by one of the leading scholars of the 20th century, Bediouzaman Said Nursi. Bediouzaman Said Nursi says, A human is a passenger from childhood to adolescence, from adolescence to old age, from old age to the grave, from the grave to the resurrection, from the resurrection to post-eternity. The journey continues. Yes, humans are passengers and life is a journey. So in a way, staying where we are, remaining stagnant is like not living at all. Great and important people have always been in a state of movement, with the prophet being the most important of all. After all, there is no estrangement for the scholar and no homeland for the ignorant. A scholar is like water. Even if they are thrown into the desert, they will turn that landscape into one like paradise. The ignorant one, however, will not change or have a positive effect on that landscape even if he stays for a thousand years. Humans are passengers, as we said before. From Aristotle's peripatetics to the disciples of Jesus, whomever was to humanity have not stayed stagnant. They have always been in action and motion. Aristotle traveled, Descartes traveled, the prophets traveled, the scholars journeyed, and the saints journeyed all on their own paths. From the prophets to the scholars, from the saints to the scientists, from Aristotle to Descartes, they have always flown towards freedom. In Islamic terminology, we call this Hijra. In Arabic, to migrate from one place to another place is called Hijra. However, this journey made from point A to point B is not Hijra. There is a difference between traveling for holidays and Hijra. There is a reasoning and meaning behind Hijra. First of all, Hijra is fate. The fate of those with a purpose in this world. Hijra is the common fate of all prophets and people who believe in them. God's prophets and believers have always been forced to migrate because of oppressors and tyrants. For the sake of their belief, they have left their homes, their relatives, their wealth, and their homelands. They left for Hijra. Prophet Abraham migrated from Babylonia to Karhe, from Karhe to Egypt, from Egypt to Syria, and from Syria to Palestine. Prophet Moses migrated from Egypt to Midian, then back to Egypt, then from Egypt to Palestine. Once he had received the commandment from Allah because of the immoral and indecent actions of his people, Prophet Lot left his hometown at night and journeyed to the place he was commanded. Hijra as a term is used to describe people who have left their hometowns due to various reasons and migrated to different lands. From the perspective of Islam, Hijra is the migration that Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, completed during the year 622 from Mecca to Medina with the aims of comfortably living and teaching the religion of Islam. In Islam, Hijra is so profound that the Muslim calendar begins with it. From an Islamic point of view, Hijra is point zero. Hijra is leaving oppression for freedom, like going from something meaningless to something meaningful. Many religious scholars have likened Hijra to a kind of horizontal Isra. Isra is a migration towards heaven. Hijra is in a way a projection of that and through divine will is migrating from a place of importance to a place of more importance. In this sense, it is much more important than presumed. The importance of Hijra is emphasized in many different surahs, within different ayahs, multiple times in the Quran. The dialogue between the believers and the angels is very striking in Surah Al Nisa 97. The angels say, When they take the souls of those who have tortured their own carnal soul, what were you doing? they ask. And they say, we were the ones whom they wanted to weaken. And the angels will say, Was not the earth of Allah wide? You should have performed hijrah, they will say. At the same time, hijrah is seen as a serious solution, an alternative. It is distressful, painful perhaps, but it is a strong and important solution. According to sources, at the peak of Islam during the Prophet's time, the companions' numbers are predicted to be around 120,000. Based on what is known, 10,000 of that, 120,000, is said to be buried in Mecca and Medina. The others have followed in the footsteps of the 100th verse of Surah Nisa and have listened to the following glad tidings, which says, whoever, without any other intention, performed hijrah on the path of Allah, they will have plenty of places to go, many resources and consolation. He who leaves his home as an emigrant to God, and his messenger, and whom death overtakes while still on the way, his reward is due and sure with God. Assuredly, God is all forgiving and 
or compassionate. As it is with every action in the religion of Islam, there is intention in the foundation of Hijrah. Let me mention a very important advantage. If you have a clear intention of Hijrah, after you leave or even after you arrive at your destination, there is a probability that it will be considered as if you did Hijrah from the very beginning. Is that not amazing? Here is the common opinion of the scholars of Islam. They say, just as a person who has migrated and performed Hijrah on the path of Allah and the Prophet will be considered as a Muhajir, a person who did not have that intention in the beginning but gained that intention later, God willing, will be considered among the Muhajirs as well. 